All right, time for the big reveal. Here's the roadmap to become an AI engineer. Hello everyone. In the last video, I explained why AI engineer is the next big tech role with the increasing demand and evolving AI space. Now in this video, I'm going to share the roadmap for how to become an AI engineer along with the learning resources and the kind of projects that you should look to develop in order to build those skills. So let's get right into it. All right, first things first, who should follow this AI engineering roadmap? Now this roadmap is for programmers, for software engineers, for analysts, for data scientists who have intermediate level understanding of programming in at least one programming language. Okay, Python ideally, but if it is Java or JavaScript, that also works. But ideally it should be Python because most of the development is being done in Python. Okay, when I say intermediate level understanding, I mean you should have experience of coding at least two to three moderately complex projects, like you know a web application with some user authentication, you must have deployed that web application, or you must have done deep analysis over a large data set, produce some insights, you have that sort of experience, or for data scientists, you must have trained some machine learning models. So that sort of experience. Okay, and you should have a deep understanding of data structures and algorithm. And if you do not, I would highly recommend that you, you know, uh, follow a Python course first, learn data structures algorithm, and then follow this roadmap. Then for analysts and scientists, I know that you like to work uh, in Google collaborative notebooks and Jupyter notebooks, and one tends to get used to coding in such interactive environments. So I would recommend that you uh, should be comfortable and you should try to pick uh, one of these IDEs like Visual Studio Code and start programming within those environments because that's again going to be a requirement uh, in this track. Alongside this, people who have not worked with Git and GitHub, uh, these are the kind of skills that you can pick up while working on the project as well. Lastly, uh, you should be comfortable reading a lot of documentation because most of the applications, most of the tools that we will be using uh, in this track are new. So we'll have to read a lot of documentation. Please note that I will be name dropping a lot of tools, company names, concepts. So all of these have been captured and obviously I will be explaining the meaning of these concepts, these tools, how to use them in the upcoming videos. But for now, the references and uh, resources to learn these things have already been captured in a repository, the link to which is already uh, mentioned in the description below. Time for the big reveal. Here's the roadmap to become an AI engineer. Now I have broken down this roadmap into three stages. We're going to go from left to right, from beginner to intermediate to advanced. Now beginner is maybe close to one month long. So you should look to develop basic application, learn to you know, work with LLM APIs, learn to build chat GPT like applications. Okay, bots for WhatsApp, for Discord, for Telegram, or using frameworks like Grid.io or Streamlit. The kind of skills that one should look to develop in the beginner stage is first of all, working with APIs, very, very important. You should be comfortable leveraging all of these LLM APIs, both open source as well as closed source. Okay, open source are basically using Hugging Face uh, and closed source, OpenAI, uh, Anthropic or Cohere. The second skill that one should look to develop within the beginner stage is very, very important, probably the most important skill, which is prompt engineering for developers. Now this, I cannot stress enough that this is going to be used uh, you know, in further stages as well. And your expertise to write good prompts is going to have a direct impact on the quality or uh, performance of your application. Then the third skill is going to be working with open source large language models using tools like LM Studio, how you can run these models locally on your machine. Okay, that's going to be very, very cost effective for you. Then the fourth skill, chain of operations how one can learn to create and automate a sequence of operations. So we'll use something called LangChain. LangChain is a library that we will be using to develop 
such chains of operations. And lastly, multi-model generation. So we'll see how you can generate code, how you can generate audio, how you, how you can generate images using the Hugging Face Transformer library. So those are the skills that we are going to focus on within the beginner stage. Now there are some projects that I have listed that you can develop. Uh, a few I have already told you. Building a chat GPT or mid journey like bot. That is something that you can build yourself now or maybe a Chrome extension to summarize the web page that is open uh, on your screen at that point or maybe a news aggregator for a specific domain. All right, so the next stage is the intermediate stage where you are going to go deep into developing more advanced applications like uh, retrieval augmented generation, rack pipelines and uh, agents. Okay, now this is going to take you close to two months to develop the kind of skills that are required to build these sort of applications. And when we talk about the kind of skills that you will need to develop, first one is you should have an understanding of vector embeddings how to store those vector embeddings in vector databases. Okay, there are a bunch of vector databases that I've listed here. Okay, so you should know how to work with those databases, how to retrieve those uh, embeddings, and then go on to build those rag pipelines where this sort of retrieval is going to be very, very crucial. Now, once you have understood how to build retrieval augmented generation pipelines, RAG pipelines. Now these RAG pipelines are going to be used to build applications where you want to chat with your knowledge base. If you have a lot of documents, a lot of PDF files that you want to chat with, okay, so you can build those sort of customer support bots, sales bots, marketing bots, so on and so forth using these RAG pipelines. Okay, then once you've understood how to build basic rack pipelines, you can go on to build advanced rack pipelines where there you can interact with multiple data sources. After this, you should look to develop agents. Now agents are basically iterative workflows that help you get uh, a big task done. And further, you can build multi-agent applications. Okay, so you should uh, look to automate those multiple agents working together to further solve a bigger problem or to do a bigger task for you. So think like you want to write a very good research paper. Okay, so first you'll have to draft an outline. So you can define all the steps that are required to write a good research paper where at every step, you know, you can uh, specify whether this is good enough or not. If there is more web search required, you can define that this is going to be the next step. All of those steps are going to be carried out, there's going to be a bunch of tools that you'll have to define. So agent, multi-agent application, where each agent is required to do a subtask and then together they finish off a big task. Okay, then once you have built these sort of applications, uh, it's very tricky to actually evaluate their performance. And this is the case with language models, you know, all over. So Evaluating a RAG pipeline is very tricky and there are some frameworks that you should uh, you know, look to uh, use and learn how they work and how you can incorporate them in order to evaluate your applications. Lastly, there's going to be some ops related work like managing these databases, deploying these applications and uh, monitoring them, uh, checking their behavior uh, when they are deployed. So some amount of deployment and uh, DevOps or LLM ops related work is going to be there. Okay, so those are primarily the kind of skills that you should look to develop. And uh, the bots or uh, the kind of projects, so I've already listed them in the repository. A Q&A bot for specific persona. So think like, you know, uh, if a doctor wants to interact with the bot to provide quick response to their patient, so they can quickly chat with the entire knowledge base or a sales agent uh, might want that sort of a Q&A bot where uh, documents are already there. A rack pipeline would quickly give them the right source of information as well. Okay, similarly, a stack overflow like search engine that you can develop with a lot of, uh, you know, documents and different data sources that you might have. So you might need to develop uh, an advanced RAG pipeline in this case. So finally, the advanced stage. Now, this is where you will get closer to AI research work. Okay, now since this is, you know, a lot more research, it'll take you more time also. Okay, so it's going to take you close to three months to build these skills over time. 
okay and the kind of projects that you will be working on here primarily involves you know a lot of data set curation data engineering fine tuning because at this stage you want those large language models to behave in a certain way okay you want them to be more knowledgeable about a specific domain so you are building personal assistant in healthcare personal assistant in finance so when fine tuning is involved there's going to be a lot of data set curation that you will have to do okay and that requires a lot of time a lot of uh, you know human hours and then once you're done with fine tuning another major skill that you will develop is evaluation and benchmarking again as i said these are very complex things uh, and uh, there's still a lot of research work which is being put in in these domains so again it's a, a continuous effort that you'll have to put in here then comes multi model application so besides text there is code image audio video uh, you know all these other modalities that you'll have to work with there are going to be hybrid search engines so you should be able to work with text as well as images so can you read information from those images as well as your pdf documents to answer the user queries those are the kind of advanced applications that you might look to develop uh, within this stage and uh, lastly there's a, a lot of llm ops related work so automated testing automated evaluation observability using uh, libraries like langchain and they have their specific you know cloud platforms and uh, model registry frameworks so langserve langsmith uh, weights and biases for observability model registry tracking all of your experiments so all of these tools are going to be required uh, in order to uh, build a complete llm ops pipeline end to end so that's going to be a huge effort and obviously will take more time as well lastly you should uh, work towards ai security as well you should know how to secure your ai applications so there are some techniques like prompt hacking and uh, incorporating defensive measures by checking against the kind of uh, vulnerabilities as well as potential risks that uh, some organizations have published now i know that this is a lot to learn and it can be overwhelming but the most important question that you must be asking me right now is how to learn all this so i've captured the resources the references to all of these topics to all of these skills in a special repository which is called ai engineer roadmap all of the resources are captured stage by stage you know corresponding to each skill you will find the resources that you should refer to and the kind of courses that you should take the kind of blog posts that you should read and the kind of people that you should follow all of those have been captured in that repository another thing is courses and these learning resources you know get very very overwhelming over a period of time and the people lose out on motivation when they follow one course after another the best way to learn i believe is by building okay so work on your own projects that is probably the best way to develop all of these skills and get hands on you know with your learning so i have also added a bunch of project ideas below the learning resources in the same repository so look at those 10 project ideas that i have enlisted and in the upcoming videos also i will be working on a subset of those projects so with that i let you guys start your own journey to become an ai engineer but before you go as you all know there are a lot of announcements and developments that are being made in the ai space and there are a lot of people who are working on very interesting ideas very interesting projects and products and you might find those ideas useful yourself so if you want to be part of such discussions please do join my discord community like this video if you found it useful share it with your friends and comment down below the kind of content that you would want to see also if you want to follow me in this journey to become an ai engineer and how i create these projects then consider subscribing to the channel that'll be the best way you can support me and i'll catch you guys in the next one up until then keep learning keep building